What's the hybridization of C2H2? Well, hydrogen doesn't hybridize, but carbon does. So you're being asked for the hybridization of those carbon atoms. You'll need to draw the Lewis structure first. To figure out the Lewis structure, you'll need to know that carbon in group 14 brings four valence electrons with it. And there's two of them, so that's four times two valence electrons. And hydrogen in group one brings one valence electron each, and there's two of those as well. Eight and two make 10 valence electrons that we're gonna have to disperse over the Lewis diagram. Let's draw the two carbons, give them a single bond to start, and then let's also bond those to hydrogen. Great. Now, we need 10 electrons total. These hydrogens are full. Hydrogen doesn't have the octet rule, it has the doublet rule. Hydrogen only makes one bond, so that's it. Hydrogen's done. What I do usually is I dump my lone pairs on the central atoms if my outer atoms are full. I have two, four, six electrons so far. Seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. And then lastly, we need to make sure each of these carbons uh, obeys the octet rule. Currently, this carbon only has two, four, six electrons around it. So I'm going to move this lone pair into a double bond. Now this carbon has two, four, six, eight electrons around it, but this carbon still only has two, four, six. Uh, to, to obey the octet rule, we need to move that one in as well. This is the Lewis structure for C2H2. Now we can figure out the hybridization. Here's how I do that. The first bond between any two atoms is a sigma bond. The next bonds between those same two atoms are pi. This is a sigma bond because there's only one bond between them, and the first bond between any two atoms is sigma. The, I, I want to remind you that carbon has four orbitals in the second energy level that could hybridize, so the maximum you can get is S, P3 but you have to leave behind a 2p orbital for each of the pi bonds. So that this one here is getting left over so that we can make a pi bond. This one's getting left over so we can make the other pi bond, which means we have one s and one p orbital that can hybridize. Therefore, the hybridization of those carbons is s, p, one s and one p. Some people might say you should put these exponents, S1, P1, to show that it's one of each, but exponents of one never mean anything in math, right? All chemists just call it SP hybridization. Both those carbons are SP hybridized, and the reason is there are two pi bonds between the two carbons. Love it. Thanks for being with me, and best of luck.